Guys, remember when Char killed Garma? Remember when Sasuke left the village? Remember when Frieza destroyed planet Vegeta? <laughs> Guys, there are a few things in life that hurt more than a knife in your back twisted by the hand of a friend. An anime betrayal, you might say. Now, funny enough, anime betrayals are not limited just to anime. We have our fair share of treachery here in esports as well, and we figured, why not rank them? This is the kind of stuff that's gonna make you say, Nani? Now, before we start the list proper, guys, understand that we're having a little bit of fun with this one, and at the end of the day, we're all friends in esports. Remember that before you flame us in the comment section. Now, let's get on with it with the top 10 anime betrayals in esports. Kicking off our list at number 10 is the original conductor of the Korean hype train, Monte Cristo. <laughs> League of Legends fans know all too well that Monty is no stranger to betrayals. But the South Korean loyalist shocked fans at the 2017 Overwatch World Cup with his ultimate anime plan, leading to this roller coaster of emotions. I spent five years of my life living in South Korea and I loved it, but today, you know what? I'm gonna be an Whoa! American. What? What a swerve! I did not expect this. You know, people have been wanting me to cheer for America for years, to protect wow. the Americans. This is one of my and top you, 10 anime betrayals you know, right you here. Know Unbelievable. What? You know what, Golden Boy? Today's not that day. No? What? There it is. <laughs> oh, no! You, this, is, this is a double heel. turn. A heel turn. A one double of us. One of us. <laughs> no, it's my. Korea, baby. Now, we just couldn't make a list of anime betrayals without it featuring Eternal Envy, which is why he comes in at number 9 on our list. The funny thing is, like, no matter how much you play with someone, you, I don't feel like I truly will ever understand them. You know, if there isn't that surprise or any, like, things that are, like, unexpected happening, it will be really boring, so... <laughs> E.E. E. can be described as a compulsive kicker with an anime-grade desire to win, which would explain the recurring theme of betrayal throughout his Dota career. So, Fnatic did what many believe to be the riskiest thing an organization could possibly do at the time. They gave the reins to Eternal Envy. Damn you, Arcturus. Don't do this. It's done. Helmsman, signal the fleet and take us out of orbit. After he was kicked from No Tide Hunter early in his career, EE e. would go on to assemble his own rosters to compete for the coveted Aegis of Champions with a number of different orcs. Despite being kicked from the team he created, Envy never gave up. But year after year, Envy would cycle through players on questionable terms, regardless of their individual performances, which often left a feeling of bitterness and betrayal within the Dota 2 community. At least I wasn't kicked by Envy. Look guys, we know how much some of you hate Fortnite, but this was just way too funny to leave off our list, which is why it takes the number 8 spot. After humiliating Ninja, Dr. Lupo agrees to help his brother in arms. Or at least that's what Ninja thought. Say my name. Ben. What ben. happened? Ben. 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 What happened? Ben. Say the right name. What's my name? Daddy, please. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Dude. Look at this. Come on, man. Stop it, dude. I, I only have that was all the wood I have left to repair that. I, am, I only have hey, one dude. left. Hey, oh, oh. <laughs> it's full. You gonna you gonna get it? There you go, man. Are you gonna get it? You gotta get it. <gasps> no, he was oh. only one. Coming in at number 7 is a tale of two Swedish comrades. Leffen was villainized by the community early on in his career for what many claimed was toxic behavior, but the young phenom always trusted that his fellow countryman Armada would have his back. But after a disappointing placement at Apex 2013, Leffen returned home to a shocking truth. Armada had been collecting evidence against him that would eventually lead to a six-month ban from the European Smash community. Armada had knew, known about it and like while I was coaching him on stage and stuff like that, he's been like trying to ban me the whole time. So at that time, I felt pretty betrayed. After training, traveling, and playing together for years, the last thing Leffen expected was for his close friend and fellow countrymen to have been plotting against him. 
which, let's be honest, is anime as hell. Geek. Leffen has since reformed and made up with Armada, wrapping up this anime betrayal with a wholesome ending fit for a Disney movie. Honestly, like at this point, I've at least forgiven Armada. I don't think it's gonna give me anything to like keep hating him or like disliking him. We can kind of look back at us, you know, like, oh, we were still a teenager, like we've all grown for it. We kind of moved on. CLG versus TSM is a classic North American rivalry in League of Legends, and one that Double Lift is certainly no stranger to. After leading CLG to an NALCS title and world's birth in 2015, the announcement that he would be leaving the team he started his career on shocked the league community. Uh, like This is a team that I grew with and I was committed to grow with for forever. Uh, but the sad thing is, like honestly, they weren't committed back. Feeling betrayed by his old support Afromu, Double if publicly stated that the two were no longer buddies. Are you and Afro still buddies? No, not really. The truth is, Afro went to the org and he said, it's either me or him. I feel like he gave up on me as a friend and as a teammate. Tag team specialist! See, one without the other isn't any good. Oh! Oh, I knew he was going to do that! The plot thickened when he announced the team that he'd be joining. Hey, my name is Doublelift, and starting today, I'll be a part of TSM. But the betrayals didn't end there. After a few middling Worlds performances, Doublelift was released from TSM. Like they kicked me off of TS, or they kicked me off of uh, CLG, and they and then they never really found success again. I hope TSM kicks me off, and they never find success again. Honestly, I do. Doublelift would have his revenge after joining Team Liquid, as he led them to Worlds, while both TSM and CLG missed out on the biggest tournament of the year. Coming in at number 5 is a continuation of the NA Dota saga of backstabs, this time focusing on AUI 2000's story. After he was kicked from Cloud9 by Eternal Envy in 2015, AUI joined Evil Geniuses and helped them tear through the International as their support. But despite dominating the competition and helping EG become the first North American team to win the multi-million dollar tournament, they kicked him from their roster shortly thereafter. I don't know if it hit me that we won TF5 just because I never really had time to take a vacation. Um, everything for like the next couple of weeks was just too surreal and then there were some major changes. <laughs> if kicking a player who helped win the international six days after hoisting the Aegis isn't an epic anime betrayal, well, we don't know what is. I won a TI after that. Still got kicked though. NA Dota's saga of anime betrayals continues yet again in our number four entry, but this time we'll be telling the tale of Arteezy. At this point, we'd just be repeating ourselves, but intertwined in the story of AUI was Arteezy, who went back and forth between EG and Secret four times in two years. Artur has been kind of like the team hopper. He left, and then he came back, and then he left again, and I think both times it was like very devastating. I wasn't totally surprised, but I was more so disappointed. So it was like very frustrating for us to lose him because we were, you know, scrambling with like, how are we going to replace a player like Artur? And the second one was, I was very, the second one was bullshit, to be honest. It was really stupid. I was very, very upset. I was pissed. <laughs> How's it feel to be back to EG for the third time? Well, it feels okay to be back in EG. Uh, actually, this is hard to answer, man. Oh my god. Talk about a double agent. Betrayals aren't always intentional. And coming in at number three is the time that Tabe probably, almost definitely, leaked Invictus Gaming's secret strats during an analyst desk segment at Worlds 2015. Seriously, just look how quickly Zyrene tries to change the subject. I'm a good friend of IG's coach, and he told me that they have secret weapon. Uh, ah, yeah. insider info, Tabe. Yeah, he told me that uh, Kakao uh, maybe will be choosing Hakrim or Lee Sin jungling. And uh, he said they are going to pick Kalista and Cannon Bot. And <laughs> well, so now everybody listening is just going to ban those yeah. out. But what if, that's the, what if that's the plan? What if they ban those out? Oh, they really have other strategies. Tabe, you're throwing everybody. No, I'm just kidding. There's also <laughs> other one, other two secret weapon is this. Well, let's not give away all their secret weapons. Let's not give away all their secret weapons. Come on. No. 
In the end, Invictus Gaming would go on to employ the same strategies that Tabe said they would, and spoiler alert, the strats did not work out. Tabe was right, everyone. Tabe and look, was right. AHQ probably didn't have enough time to listen, so nothing given away. But the Nexus falls, AHQ even out the matchup here, and IG look all over the place. Look guys, Astralis may be the best CSGO team of all time, but that doesn't exclude them from the struggles of betrayal. In early 2018, Kyarbi left the team just before he was supposed to renew his contract, which is why he comes in at number two on our list. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the great Northern betrayal. He was supposed to go on a skiing vacation and everything, and then like, it started continuing a little bit. I can't remember how many days it were, but suddenly it was like, it was so obvious. I can't remember who it was, called his dad, and he said he was sick with the flu, and we're like, can you please tell us if he's gonna sign or not? It was a hard decision, but I think uh, definitely it was the, uh, the right decision career-wise for me. There was a lot of hard feelings. I don't think we wanted him to have any success with North. Ultimately, it made us better. I still feel like we can get a good relationship out of it, but it's just, yeah, it's just sad to feel betrayed in, in some way. Taking the title for the ultimate anime betrayal is the story of Fly and No Tail. It's like a great anime battle, you know, like, fuck, the, like, oh man, like, whenever Sasuke betrayed Naruto. OG was a roster built on trust and friendship. The duo won a number of majors together, but could never perform when it mattered most at the International. After a year of dominance, I got crushed. Then, just months before TI, relations were severed. In a move that shocked the world, the team built up on friendship and love had a split that nobody saw coming. Fly an S4, why did you leave OG? The team hasn't worked for a long time, uh, and I can say personally that I lost a lot of motivation when the whole uh, situation arised where I could join EG. I felt a new surge of motivation where I felt like this is really a team I could win with. I'm actually not that willing to talk about it. Yeah. It's uh, something for later, yeah. another day. It's just personal, it's yeah. nobody's business. Right. I can just say that the way it happened was was not nice uh, towards the ones that were left behind. And in true anime form, Fly and No-Tail were destined to meet on opposing teams at the TI-8 upper bracket. Curse from No-Tail comes out to the three and the tops and teeping out of it. Oh, hang on. They'll take him into the snowball. They want to keep the try going. They get on top the of the egg. Square. They'll take down the egg. They'll find the egg. That punch crew. Prince going to fall. They're oh, all dead. This is team wide. Oh, my Lord. Oh, gee. To stick through it after dealing with such a bullshit oh. as this tiny. Oh, the look there from no time. But this is one anime betrayal with a happy ending. Having defeated his former friends and teammates, No Tail took a rookie star and former coach all the way to hoist the Aegis of Champions. Cinderella's story ain't got nothing on this! OG! Your TIA Champion! Well, guys, that's our list of the top 10 anime betrayals in esports. Now, if you want more content like this, you already know what to do. Hit the subscribe button, tap that like button, and don't forget to comment below. Now, let me just say, I'm so glad that we here at The Score Esports value our trust and our friendship enough. Thanks for watching. If you want more great content just like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button.